we're going to start the next lecture. We're going to do a best fit overview. Um, so we'll take a quick look at um, some of the purposes and kind of reasons behind RMC best fit. And we'll talk a little bit about Bayes theorem. And then we'll look at the look at best fits project elements. So some of this will answer some of your questions here, but um, a lot of the deeper reasons are we, we kind of address in maybe the later the, the level 216 class. And we can talk offline on some other things too. All right. So in this lecture, we're going to give that overview of RMC best fit. So we'll explore the background behind it and the three main project elements uh, within best fit. So that's the input data, your distribution fitting, and the Bayesian estimation. Uh, and then we'll take a quick look at the user interface and just how it works. So each one of these we'll look at in further details in later lectures. But this is just, like I said, a quick overview of it. So why use uh, Bayesian methods? So we can use Bayesian estimation analysis uh, and fitting tool, so RMC best fit, to enhance and expedite flood hazards risk assessments within the flood risk management, planning, and dam and levee safety communities of practice. So the Bayesian approach offers a framework that is well suited to incorporate all sources of available hydrologic information such as the systematic records, historic data, regional information like regional skew and um, rainfall runoff results. So um, some of that we call prior information, information you know before doing the analysis. So that's, that's where that regional skew, that regional uh, rainfall frequency will play into it. So we also have, we can incorporate paleo flood analysis results as well as um, expert elicitation. It gives you a little flexibility to, to use some engineering judgment. So. Uh, with the ability to incorporate regional information and expert elicitation, Bayesian methods can provide um, higher confidence in the fitted flood frequency curves and the resulting reservoir stage frequency curves. And that's important when we're doing dam levy safety. We're trying to reduce our uncertainty. So Best Fit was developed by the Risk Management Center in collaboration with the Erdic Coastal Hydrologic Laboratory. So just, just for reference there. So what is Bayes' theorem? So Bayes' theorem describes the conditional probability of an event based on data as well as prior information or beliefs about the event or conditions related to the event. So it provides a way to revise existing predictions given new or additional information or evidence. So simply said, Bayes' theorem is an initial belief plus some new evidence equals a new and improved belief. So Bayesian takes, an, it takes more of an intuitive approach to the problem. Um, so we, we won't, again, we won't deep dive into what Bayes' theorem is uh, in this course. We, we do cover the theory behind Bayes' theorem and how we use it within Bayes fit, Best Fit in our uh, level two DSL 216 flood hazards for risk assessment course. But hopefully with that little bit of background, you are now more of an expert in Bayes and you will have no trouble. So, but if you, not to worry, Best Fit is built as an intuitive, straightforward software. So it can handle all the statistical analysis for you, almost black box like, but it handles it all for you if you don't quite grasp the full you know, equation of Bayes theorem just yet. So right now, just know that it does it all for you with a lot of good default settings to take care of the problem for you. All right, so when's a good time to use Best Fit? Basically, we would, we would suggest using it at any level of study from screening through detailed assessments. So especially for dam and levy safety. Um, Best Fit can be used for many different types of distribution distribution fitting applications, such as flood hazards, seismic hazards, expert elicitation, and many others. Um, and uh, RMC best fit analysis can include many different sources of data. Basically, if there is a need to fit a distribution to a set of data, best fit is an excellent choice. So it, it's got a lot of different distributions in it. Um, not just LP3, but a lot of other ones, if, depending on what you're, what you might be doing. So, so best fit provides a user friendly interface that simplifies many of the parameter inputs and selections. 
The software allows for user customizations both to look and feel of the software, but also report quality plots and tables. So the graphical user interface consists of a menu bar, a toolbar, and four window panes. So the project explorer shows the hierarchy of the elements within your project. So here you can view and navigate and manage your project elements. The main window pane is where the current project element is displayed. Uh, the main window pane includes tabs for opening the project elements. Uh, you can select any um, open element, any project element. You, know, you can reorder them, drag them around to another location. You can float them outside the window pane. This gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, so then you've got the properties window pane. So this displays, uh, which displays the project element principles. So depending on the project element selected, the properties change to show the available options uh, for editing. So you got the message window pane, which shows the errors, warnings, uh, messages, and event logs regarding the, the current state of your project. Like I was saying, you, you can move and dock window panes where you want. You can hide them until you, you need them. You can float them outside um, where you want them, or you, or you can just close them down. So any of the window panes can also just be reopened using a menu bar. Um, and you can, you can, again, float them anywhere you want. So there are also two color themes uh, to choose from. Uh, you can see the one up here is the light. There's also a dark, kind of a blue, a darker blue version. So both themes can be selected from the options under tools in the menu bar. All right, now let's talk a little bit more about the project elements. So first up is the input data. So input data consists of block annual maxima, which are assumed to be independent and identically distributed. So best fit supports three input data types, systematic data, interval data, and threshold data. Here you can see where um, the input data set is organized in the RMC best fit project explorer window, right where that yellow arrow is pointed. So we'll take a quicker, we'll take a closer look at that um, input data. So systematic data is defined as exact data that is collected at a regular prescribed interval under a defined protocol. So we assume this type of data is not, um, there's no uncertainty to it. An example of systematic data, of course, is observed flow from USGS gauges. Uh, so this figure shows an example of systematic data set that's been entered into best fit. So interval data is also called interval sensor data is used to describe observed floods whose magnitude are not known exactly, but are known to fall within an estimated range or interval. So interval data is used for observed floods where the magnitude of the flood has um, a, a significant uncertainty. So enough uncertainty that we don't really want to assume that it's, the value is exact. So in the plot, you can see two um, flow intervals representing the paleo flood in water year 1020, and then a historical flood in the water year 1882. So interval data is displayed as a light blue point with uncertainty whiskers. So, oh, just to mention, historical and paleo flood events can be incorporated into the analysis using, you know, flood or volume intervals. Sorry. So, now, perception thresholds describe um, unobserved floods that occur during a defined time period or whose magnitude is known to be less than some threshold value. So, perception thresholds allow us to model periods of time where the, where there were Unobserved floods, um, where the magnitude is known to be less. Uh, so other sources of evidence are used to estimate the threshold value. So we're using something else. Um, so, for example, there might be uh, evidence that a large flood during a historical period occurred in 1882 and had a magnitude of 76,000. Let's see. There we go. Um, the reasonable conclusion would be that all other unobserved floods during the historical period were less than 76,000 CFS. Therefore, the threshold is set to a value of 76,000. So thresholds can be 
also be used to model unobserved flows uh, for a crest stage gauge where the threshold would be equal to the base of the recording discharge for that gauge. So best fit models threshold data as left centered data, which means less than. So there's, it, you, there's also right centered thresholds, but they're pretty uncommon uh, for flood hazards. And so we typically just don't model them here and, and deal with those. Um, so now let's talk about like the second um, best fit project element. So that's the distribution fitting tool. Uh, so the distribution fitting uh, analysis in best fit uses the method of maximum likelihood estimation or MLE uh, to fit alternative distributions to the input data. Uh, the distribution fitting process can inform selection of a distribution for use in a Bayesian estimation analysis. So if you wanted to see if the data wanted something other than LP3 or some other, this is the tool to you, or you can see how well the LP3 fits. So now let's look at this tool a little bit more detail. So best fits distribution fitting provides three goodness of fit measures. There's AKA, AKA key information criteria. I'm not gonna try to say that again. I'm gonna just call it AIC. There's the Bayesian information criteria, the BIC. Um, and as uh, root mean squared error, of course. So these measures indicate how well the distribution fits the input data with the, with the smaller value representing the better fit. So. so best fit also offers five types of plots to visually um, assess the quality of the distribution fitting. Uh, frequency, so there's a frequency plot, there's a PDF plot, which is shown here, it has CDF plots, then there's percentile, percentile plots, and quantile, quantile plots. So lots of things for you to look at. So the distributions can be turned on or off um, so that you can focus on the distributions you want, meaning there's a whole list there. You might only want to look at the three parameter versus the two parameter, or you want to look at two parameter versus three parameter, or whichever ones, but you can turn them off to compare them. So, so best fits distribution fitting also provides a, a tabular result a summary. Um, for the fitted distribution parameters. And it also has the basic statistics for each one of those and quantiles for specific annual exceedance probabilities for each of those um, in that tool. All right, now let's, let's move on to the third project element and that's the Bayesian estimation. Uh, so now the reality is this is the heart of the software and what really separates best fit um, as the ideal software for flood hazards and risk assessments so best fit performs a Bayesian estimation using um, we'll call it an efficient markov chain monte carlo mcmc algorithm to estimate the distribution parameters given the input data so let's let's look at that project element here so so best fit best fits Bayesian estimation tab allows the user to select an input data and a distribution type. So it has default inputs for prior distributions, and they're already provided based on the input data that you select. There's default simulation options and output options um, that are autom automatically set for you. Um, both options can be accessed through the option tabs, but those are set up so that you are more or less guaranteed to get a good result um, out of the box. So the analysis can be uh, run by selecting the estimation button at the bottom. All right, frequency results are the primary exp uh, exploration tool for graphical and tabular results of the analysis. So shown on the left is the frequency curve and shown are the uh, posterior predictive curve with a 90% credible interval and posterior mode curve. That's in the left. So shown on the right are the tabular results for the frequency curve, including the tabular summary for the AEP along with the parameter estimates and the summary statistics for the posterior mode. So you can think of the posterior mode as the computed frequency curve and the posterior predictive as an expected or mean frequency curve. Uh, so for a lot of our risk assessments uh, from here, and like we'll talk in the um, RFA, you're going to want to use the expected frequency or here the posterior predictive curve um, to inform flood hazards. So several addition, additional expo 
exploration tools are available. Um, so shown here is, is an example of a kernel density plot of the parameters, and here's a bivariate uh, plot. So the kernel density plot shows, again, the distribution of a parameter, and the bivariate plot shows the relationship between a set of two parameters. So it's hard to see. Basically, you have the skew and the y, standard deviation on the x, and uh, the, the bigger the skew, the less standard deviation. So showing the relationship. So BestFit also provides several diagnostic tools. Uh, so examples of those are autocorrelation. You have Markov chain traces and a mean likelihood plot. So the default simulation options, again, will typically ensure you get good, reasonable results out of the box. So however, there are there may be situations where you need to evaluate these diagnose, yeah, diagno using the diagnostics and adjust your simulation. So best fit plots can be edited to produce report quality figures, uh, allowing you to clearly communicate the information in a report and presentation. You want to be able to really show off the work you did. So particular, um, every element of the plot can be edited. Some examples um, of this include uh, plot titles, access labels, and series formatting, as well as the ability to add markers, uh, text, and or other types of annotations. So more will be covered on day two uh, on making a report quality plot. We'll, we'll go through that process. So again, additional support for best fit software can be found in these two documents. Uh, so there are RMC publications on the website for RMC. So there's the quick start guide, which provides more detailed instructions for you how to use the software. And then there's the verification doc document, which demonstrates that the software works correctly.